Hey everyone, SoFi gave investors some great detail about the default rates on the loan portfolio that they hold. They also gave some alarming forecasts about what's going to happen to the delinquency rates in their loan portfolio. So I wanted to go into detail on those metrics and then kind of discuss how that relates to the customer deposits that SoFi is attracting multi-billions every quarter and elaborate on what that will mean for SoFi stock investors. So let's take a look. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now. All right, so SoFi noting that their balance sheet 90-day student loan delinquency rate was 13 basis points while their annual student loan charge-off rate was 60 basis points. The student loan portfolio generally has a lower default rate than SoFi's personal loan portfolio, which we saw again in the latest quarter. In Q1, their balance sheet 90-day personal loan delinquency rate was 72 basis points. And you can see the comparison here, 13 basis points versus 72 basis points, nearly six times the rate of defaults on personal loans versus student loans. And the difference is how they are categorized. It makes a big difference. You might say, well, what's the difference? A loan is a loan, right? Personal loan or student loan. Well, the difference is how the courts perceive this, how the bankruptcy courts perceive this. In bankruptcy court, you cannot discharge student loans for the most part. There are certain occasions where you can, but for the most part, student loans, if you take out a student loan, it's going to be with you for your whole life, unless you pay it back or the government gives you a break on it like the Biden administration has been doing, writing off billions and billions of dollars of student loans. But otherwise, you're stuck with it. You've got to pay it back or it's going to be with you. It's going to be on your credit. It's going to be haunting you. You might get your wages garnished. You might get your tax refunds taken. It's going to stick around. Whereas personal loans, if you take out a personal loan and you default, the major repercussion for that is that your credit rate will decrease. You can file for bankruptcy and those personal loans will be wiped out, meaning you can start fresh. Of course, after bankruptcy, there's a lot of other considerations to make. But for the most part, that's the big difference. Personal loans can be written off in bankruptcy, whereas student loans, for the most part, cannot be. And so people know this. And when they're considering, OK, which one of my payments do I make? Do I make my personal loan payment? Or do I make my student loan payment if they have both? And if they're in trouble, they'll choose to make the student loan payment and not make the personal loan payment. And this difference will worsen as the economic situation worsens. So when there's more job losses, when there's more economic contraction, when there's a recession, this will worsen and the spread will get worse. Now. Their annualized personal loan charge-off rate actually decreased in the latest quarter to 3.45% from 4.2%. But that's a bit misleading because SoFi sold off some delinquent loans. And so that made their, their charge-off rate look lower because they sold off some of those loans and took it off of their books. And so it didn't come in the report and it made the loan charge-off rate actually appear lower than it really is. In fact, in the longer run, and this is the alarming news that I referred to in the beginning of the video, SoFi anticipates normalization in credit performance toward pre-pandemic levels of 7 to 8% of life of loan losses. So, they tried to bring this to you in a friendly way by saying it's going to normalize, right? They're trying to say it's going to be normal. But what this actually means is there's going to be a lot more defaults within SoFi's loan portfolio. The personal loan portfolio charge-off rate, let's say it's even if we round it up to 4%, 
If it goes to 8%, that means the default rates are going to double. The charge-off rates are going to double from where they are today. And if you think about it intuitively, it makes sense because during the pandemic and in, you know, still, consumer balance sheets are much stronger than they were before the pandemic. If you think about all of the stimulus that went into the economy, the trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, multiple rounds of trillion dollar stimulus by the government in the US really helped the consumer, really solidified their balance sheets. They got thousands and thousands of dollars of stimulus checks. If you were unemployed, you got your unemployment benefit plus $600 per week. A lot of people were earning more while they were unemployed than they were when they were working before the pandemic. So all of that extra money really helped people solidify their balance sheet. If they had some credit card debt, high interest, they paid it off. If they had some car debt, they paid it off. Whatever they needed to do to get themselves back on track, they did so. They had a lot of money left over. You saw data that were showing trillions of dollars of excess savings in people's bank accounts. And then coming out of the pandemic, that has persisted, right? Because if you have an extra few thousand dollars in your bank account, on average, if you're looking at a whole economy, that's not going to go away in one quarter. You're going to spend that down. Sure. Like every month people are, have been spending more than they've been making. And so that savings rate has been falling the built-up savings has been falling but there was still a great deal of built-up savings and so default rates have been much lower than they were before the pandemic because people's situation has been much better than it was before the pandemic but the economy is normalizing you're not seeing these offers anymore where remember when we were first reopening Companies like Amazon were offering people an extra $2 per hour plus a $1,000 sign-up bonus just to come work for them. And that was common for many companies. You're not seeing that anymore. Those labor shortages have mostly gone away except for a few pockets of jobs where companies are still relatively desperate for workers. But for the most part that's gone away in fact you've seen companies having layoffs etc so that built up robustness of consumer balance sheets has been working itself down and it's worsening as we go through 2024 and it will likely continue to worsen in 2025 because the cost of living has increased by so much people have to pay so much more for just normal cost of living items, everyday necessities like rent, fuel, food, clothing, etc. And so that's less money left over for other things like paying down debt. So the economic situation individually is worsening. Macroeconomically, the economy is slowing as well, but that factor is worsening on an individual level especially for those on the lower income levels and those that are most most exposed to these types of defaults on their personal loans so sofi is smart right management understands this and they even said coming into 2024 they're going to be more prudent they're going to make less loans this year than last year because they realize this they're not just trying to be blind to this fact and try and hope and dream that things will be different no management is smart they're planning for this and so this isn't going this is not likely to be a disaster but it is something to be aware of and it is something that sofi is aware of and as long as things go as planned then sofi should be okay right as long as things go you know they're saying it's going to go back to pre-pandemic levels of seven to eight percent but it could be much worse than that and that's where sofi could be in trouble is if those default rates go beyond these levels that they are predicting and things get much worse then perhaps they would be in some trouble but going back to seven to eight percent given that they're planning for it i think sofi should be okay 
Thank you for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. I know there's a lot you could be doing with your time and a lot of other videos you could be watching. So I truly appreciate that you chose to watch this one. If you want to see more videos just like this, hit the subscribe or the like button. They'll both help me make more videos just like this one. Thank you again.